This is an incredible vehicle, and it's going to the moon. Earlier this month, Blue Origin billionaire founder Jeff Bezos showed off the Blue Moon Lander for the first time and laid out all the ways it could be used for future moon missions, including ones involving humans. But what's really cool, the spacecraft could one day use resources that have ties right here to the University of Central Florida. Returning to News 6 at 9, UCF planetary scientist Dr. Phil Metzger. Welcome back. We're so excited to have you here. Hi, I'm glad to be back today. And this is exciting news that UCF could be involved with Blue Origin space exploration. Tell us about those ties. So um, UCF has developed a reputation for working in the field of space resources. Over the past year, we've been visited by the government of Luxembourg and by representatives from Japan, and they keep telling us that globally, we're known as one of the two leading universities in the world in the field of mining and using resources in space. We didn't even realize we had developed that reputation. Um, so um, Blue Origin's goal, their vision, is to have millions of people working in space off of planet Earth to try to address global, uh, global environmental challenges by moving industry off of the planet and also create a great vision for humanity. And that exactly aligns with our, our goal because you have to use space resources to achieve these objectives. So to hear that you are known worldwide as one of the top two space exploration universities, I mean, how did that make you feel? You said you didn't even know you had that reputation. So, well, we've been working hard to develop ourselves in this field. So we, um, the University of Central Florida now manages the Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico, which uh, is used, among other things, to characterize asteroids, which could be mined for resources. And so we've been pushing hard in this field. Um, but we just didn't realize that the word had gotten out yeah. globally. So it came as a surprise uh, when people started calling at our door. And you're talking about mining things, like mining on the moon. You obviously guys have um, you know, history with that. And even Bezos mentioned the uh, Shackleton Crater. What do you know about that stuff? Yeah, so uh, we used to think that the moon did, had everything except um, hydrogen, carbon, and nitrogen. But there were some hints that there is ice at the poles of the moon, especially, for example, in Shackleton Crater, which is one of the craters right at the South Pole. And so in um, 2009, NASA crashed a spacecraft into one of the craters near Shackleton, and a big splash of ice came out of the hmm. crater. Hmm. And it is not just water ice, but it's carbon dioxide and it's nitrogen compounds. And so we now know that the moon has everything you need in order to do industrial operations off of planet Earth. And that is great news because it, it means the moon is the perfect stepping stone for humanity to get beyond the limits of a single planet. We just saw a video clip there, and we know you were a judge at a recent lunar mining competition. <laughs> so tell us about what happens at these and the real goals that come out of those. Right. So this was a mining competition that was in the heritage of one that NASA operates. And NASA had to take one year off. And so some industrial sponsors, including Caterpillar, picked it up this one year. And... Um, this competition is for undergraduate college students, and they build robots that could mine on the moon or on Mars. And the, the enthusiasm is amazing. I, I've been a judge at this competition almost every year, and we take notes on the robots, and NASA has been actually learning from these robots. We've evaluated 470 robots so far, almost for free, no cost to the taxpayers almost, and we've made progress in robotics that couldn't have been made any other way. Wow. That's just so impressive when you think about it. It's just a competition between undergrads, you know, trying to come up with these robots. Yes, and you said NASA learning from that. That's incredible. And there are so many people joining the space race and launch providers. That's really beneficial to UCF and all of your experiments. Tell us about that. So, um, yeah, it's been a revolution in launch capabilities over the past decade. There have been a lot of companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin developing new rockets. The United Launch Alliance is working on a new rocket other smaller launcher companies, and with reusability of rockets where they can land them, the cost of spaceflight is coming way down. And that is exciting for us because that means we can start putting robotics on the moon and on Mars and start doing more activities than we've ever done in space before. 
Have what, you, about mm -hmm. the, what about the Exolith Lab? We've been hearing about all the mining. We, you talked about some of the things that have been found there already. Tell us more about the Exolith Lab. Yeah, that's uh, another exciting thing going on at the University of Central Florida. So a postdoctoral researcher, Dr. Kevin Cannon, founded this, and he's working with Dr. Dan Britt with the faculty. And um, they decided that they wanted to be able to simulate every planetary body in the solar system. And there are literally hundreds of planet-sized bodies in our solar system, uh, including the moon, Mars, the moons of Mars are, are small bodies, there are asteroids. And so what Kevin and his uh, colleagues are doing is scouring the world for the right kinds of rocks. They go traipsing around in the mountains and collecting samples and then they crush them and put them together using special processes they developed to create simulated planetary material. Um, and people around the world have been ordering hundreds of tons of this material. They've been mm -hmm. shipping it out to researchers. So you guys have so many projects. Obviously, UC, UCF was involved with uh, another Blue Origin launch. How is Citronaut doing? <laughs> so <laughs> cute. He's a big deal, right? Uh, yeah, yes. Citronaut is awesome. <laughs> yes. So Citronaut was um, UCF's <laughs> first mascot. It was an um, anthropomorphic orange with a spacesuit. <laughs> and uh, it got retired Aww. pretty early, but... It's so awful that it's wonderful. Everybody loves it. <laughs> <Yeah. that. laughs> um, so Dr. Addie Dove, one of the, um, the amazing faculty members in our planetary research group, has been taking Citronaut with her on all of her planetary science adventures. And at one of the recent Blue Origin launches, everybody loved it so much that she decided she wanted to send Citronaut into space. <laughs> and so she actually did. She included it in her payload, and it went up on the last Blue Origin launch. So Citronaut has been to space and has returned safely to oh, the so surface of back. the Earth. he's back. Okay. That's so, right. <laughs> all right. We were concerned, yes, so he, he made it back okay. He might go back up. Who knows? I think he might. <laughs> you know, yes. So much going on. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Thank you. I know it's not going to be the last time we talk to you because it looks like, you know, to the infinity and beyond, it can yes. be possible with you guys. We love all the excitement. Yes.